This crop originated in the jungle of Brazil, from where it spread to other tropical areas in South America, as well as Central America, Africa and Australia, sprouts a tropical fruit belonging to the passionflower family, of which more than 400 varieties are known. Passion fruit is an excellent source of vitamin A, niacin, riboflavin, ascorbic acid. The peel and seeds can also be used in the industry for its components. This fruit is consumed in all cities in Colombia and comes mostly from the departments of Santander and Valle del Cauca, where it is considered by consumers to be of very good quality due to its flavor, uniform color, yield and absence of blemishes. For this reason it has higher prices compared to other producing areas of Colombia. In Valle del Cauca, we mainly have special agroclimatic conditions for the cultivation of passion fruit. This has a period of approximately 18 months. In this period of 18 months we have fruiting from 6 months of age and then we will have constant production. This is a plant that, according to phytosanitary conditions, is produced from 300 to 1,600 meters above sea level. The climate in which it develops requires alternating wet and dry seasons and 1,000 to 1,500 millimeters of rainfall. It is also important to emphasize that the temperature cannot be higher than 32 degrees Celsius, because otherwise we have problems with the pollen which crystallizes and makes the fructification of the plants unfeasible. Why are these types of ridges made? Because we really need to quickly evacuate the rainwater and the drains are on the outside of the lot. Here we work with irrigation tape and we install the drip irrigation tape. And when the plants are about four or five months old we install the second line in order to have an irrigation supply that allows us to give a good supply to the plant so that it can properly fill the fruit. Here, planting distances of 4 meters between beds and 3 meters between plants are managed, allowing the entry of tractors that perform the work of spraying. As for the tutors, in the Valle del Cauca area, the tablecloth system has been used, which allows the entry of light and the plants to be in a better conformation, which helps us to apply products for the control of pests and diseases. In addition, it has been proven that it has a better production because the plant can reach much longer health and produce fruits of better quality. Among the passion flowers cultivated in Colombia are the granadilla, the galupa, the badia, and the passion fruit, which can become the most important or the most common flora, the one that most Colombians know. The plant has a superficial root, its root is not more than 50 centimeters long. For this reason it is important for the location of both fertilizers in competition. You should always try to have a clean plate and that there is not much undergrowth on the site. Its stem is woody, fibrous, Climbing aspect, the stem over time, is dilnificando, and he is thickening. The leaves are alternate and most of them have three lobes, with tendrils as well. The clays are used by the plant to go entangling through the fiber and going up to the tutor that is put. The flowers of this plant are perfect, that is to say, that they have the masculine and feminine organs. But even so it is not autocompatible, that is to say, that she herself is not fecundated. 
it is not pollinated. The fruit is an ovoid fence that can be around the 230 to 300 grams and contains around 180 to 200 seeds. The next task that we are going to see is the hanging, it is a very important task that must be done on time, because if it is not done on time, the plant will lose vigor and we will lose time, so that the plant reaches the net quickly. It can be done in two ways, one by tying directly to the stem and the other using stakes and tying the fiber directly to the stake. So what would we do in this way? We start directing the plant and hanging it through the fiber so that it goes up. That's one way. That way we would not have to be aware that the fiber is going to be embedded inside the stem. But what is the disadvantage of this way? We have to make several stakes and obviously that has a cost. The other way is the following. You make a slip knot, so that if it is going to thicken it will not have so much problem, it will not rub. With that shape, as the plant grows and I organize it, I tie it through the fiber so that it reaches the wire in the shortest time possible. It is necessary to be very careful with it, that it grows well rolled up so that it does not have problems when falling to the ground with insects, etc., and that it breaks when it does not have a place to wrap itself in time. Because this plant grows very quickly, this week we do this work, next week we will have this plant growing a number of centimeters up. If we neglect this work, the plant will have a treatment, the plant will fall behind because it can fall to the ground, it can break. So we need to keep it in order. Once the plant is hung, a very important work must be done, which is the sucker work. If we do not eliminate the sucker, this will take all the strength of the plant, and we will have here a structure that later will not be useful for anything. The smaller suckers that are smaller, we can eliminate them manually from each axle. We eliminate all the suckers that come out in each axle and the suckers that are larger. I disinfect the scissors and we are doing the work of cutting the sucker. The plant weekly or twice a week. Because depending on the vigor that my plant brings, I must do this activity to be only with its leaf in the apical part so that it takes all the vigor. It is important to disinfect the shears with hypochlorite, because viruses and diseases can be transmitted from one plant to another, contaminating the entire crop and losing the investment made. As the plant grows we must be very attentive to a task that is the tying of the plant through the fiber. Although we can appreciate that the plant uses its tendrils to hang itself, in any case, if in the area we have many winds, the winds will make the stem break, what we are doing as the plant grows is to organize it. We remove the tendrils and the ideal is to guide it through the fiber so that it can organize itself. The time it takes for the plant to reach the main wire is about a month. If your area has a lot of wind, the ideal is to guide the apical dominance towards the wire. Yes. And I can guide another sucker towards the opposite side of the wire. 
The idea is that here we are going to continue we count eight suckers and make a pinch. To stimulate the growth of all the suckers we have, because those are the ones that are going to help us to cover the space and fill the tablecloth. Once the pikel dominance was broken as we saw before, this starts the growth of all the suckers that had the plant laterally, which are the ones that I have to guide towards the wire so that later they cover all the wire and I can form the tablecloth that I want. Don Anibal, do me a favor, here Don Anibal is going to show us how each sucker should be tied towards the wire. If I place it this way, she will hang down. She will throw herself all the time to the floor, there is nowhere to lean, I place it here, I mount it on the wire strand and she is already making the tablecloth. The formation of the aerial part of the plant is a very delicate task in which the suckers must be guided very well so as not to break them, when the mantle is already formed, the fiber must be removed to avoid that when the stem increases in diameter the fiber does not hang it, this activity must be done during the first four months. Mrs. Lucy, I was looking around here at these plants and we are going to do something, ready, I need you to please do a second trimming of this because I see that we are behind in this trimming and I need you to please trim it to eight yoke, so that the main one can be trimmed. In other words, engineer, it would be a second pruning. Exactly, we are going to do a second pruning to try to stimulate more of these points so that we can quickly cover this piece. Let's have more training, then help me with that. Let's cut here to eight points. And all the girls are using that to make the cut. Yes, sir, all of them. All right, don't forget that this is very important because of the virus issue, okay? Yes, sir. Well, we cut the main one here and what we are going to do with the second one is like this one that is coming here. We are going to form it also here, on this wire and here Lucy, we are going to cut this one to six yoke then count six yoke and we cut it also. So Lucy, what we are going to do with this is to try to stimulate all the internodes it has, so that we get good leaves, remember that we are always going to send it over the wire, right? We cannot leave it under the wire because it becomes a ranch. All these pruning tasks should be carried out in order to improve the structure of the plant, the production of healthy, larger fruit, facilitate crop management, aeration, lighting, pest and disease control, as well as to improve the effectiveness of the trellising system. Continuing with the work of the crop, we have the corking, it is another extremely important work and consists of organizing the branches that have fallen laterally from the wires. This work consists of joining two branches, one with the other, to prevent them from touching the ground and forming a kind of swing the two branches and the idea is that the curtain is formed. These curtailments must be done periodically to avoid wind damage, closing the streets and branches reaching the ground. In terms of pests we have a number of insects that attack the passion fruit crop. Among the most limiting pests, I say that the number one are the thrips, in the area we have thrips falmi and thrips franquiniella. They are characterized by attacking the new sprouting points. Its cycle is very short. They damage the growing points and what it does is that the plant loses vigor and sometimes we can also have defoliation. Another pest that we have here in the crop is the red mite, red mite, which 
attacks the leaf, and as time goes by in its attack, they all turn yellow and also cause defoliation. Another pest that we have here in the crop is the red mite, which also injects toxins into the fruits formed and causes deformity in them. And this is a new pest in the area, called Compsus. Its control is by picking it because when it feels that insecticides are being applied it tends to fly or fall to the ground. Continuing with some of the most limiting diseases of this crop, there is the anthracnose, it is characterized by forming a circular ring, it deteriorates part of the peel aesthetically affecting the fruit, also the brown spot causes a detriment in the external part, if we open these fruits, the content is not going to be affected. Other limiting factors are viruses such as the soybean virus, which affects the fruit, also known as the noni virus, and also deforms the foliage, stopping the growth points until a series of blisters appear, affecting the photosynthetic activity of the leaves. Although the passion fruit has a complete flower, that is, it has both male and female organs. It is self-incompatible, that is, it does not receive its own pollen, in areas where there are no natural pollinators. Pollination must be done with field personnel. Pollination by insects in areas where there are insects, is around 50 to 60 percent, and the pollination that is done manually increases the efficiency of pollination to 80 or sometimes 90 percent. Pollination is to collect pollen from the flower and carry that pollen to the other flowers and go pollinating. In the crop begin to open the flowers around 12.30. At 1.30 in the afternoon they are already fully open, then with the operators we begin to do that work manually, approximately, 6 or 6.30 in the afternoon, the flower closes and already, well, the flower that is not pollinated that day falls. This work must be well done for the fruit to grow and be selective. I like all this. After one can work there we do it, don't we? I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't go home from work and that's how I spend my time. The time elapsed between pollination and harvest is about 60 days, in those 60 days the fruit takes the organoleptic characteristics necessary to be consumed, i.e., it takes the bricks degrees, sugars and the characteristic color. In these passion fruit that we have here, what this passion fruit is, this would be 85 to 90 percent of select, because the passion fruit, look, it has a color, where if they are going to take it to another part it will arrive like this. The idea is to harvest it like this. You have to harvest it all from the bush to have the best quality. We need to harvest, well harvest it on the plant so that it does not fall on the ground, so that we do not have the problem that all the passion fruit that is on the ground would already be, first, juicy. The idea is not to get quantity but quality. Here we can see that the fruit will acquire its organoleptic component. and it is ready to be shipped to market.
If we harvest the greatest amount of fruit from the plant, we will guarantee a higher quality and this will be reflected in the farmer's pocket. Once the product enters the post-harvest warehouse, the selection and packing processes begin. The fruit is classified into four basic qualities, select, first, juicy and industrial, their differences vary in calibers, weight, size, ripeness, percentages of affections, but they all comply with the characteristics in terms of bricks degrees, acidity, percentage of pulp, volume and physiological acceptance characteristics of quality. The selection and packing process in Grahala's essay is done through the use of a semi-automatic equipment, which has a specific condition, called weight calibration. For the case of the domestic market, we require that the passion fruit has a homogeneity per packing unit up to 95%. So this machine that you can see, helps us to have that condition very well established. How is this process done? An analysis is made of each of the lots that are in production to determine optimal quality characteristics, such as weights, sizes, and volume. Based on these data, the machine operates with a specific software and a specific program for each fine and for each lot. We enter the different data into the system and we make a dosage in one of the six trays that our equipment has. It is important to keep in mind that passion fruit is one of the most sensitive products at the physiological level and must have a specific post-harvest handling, with standard controls of temperature and relative humidity, mainly to avoid the processes of dehydration of the fruit, which can damage the presentation. An abundant harvest and the post-harvest process is the happy completion of any crop that has been provided with all the necessary elements or factors of production. Here we culminate this cycle in which all the fundamental quality conditions were provided to bring this tropical, surprisingly aromatic fruit to fruition. Because who does not recognize the smell and taste of passion fruit? Once you taste passion fruit it is impossible to forget it. Olvidarse de ella.